Welcome back to AWS On Air. I'm A.M. Grabelny, and I can tell by the dryness of my skin, we're reaching the end of reInvent here. But we're still coming to you and bringing you the most exciting launches that we've had so far. I'm joined by Jeff. Please, Jeff, tell the people who you are. I'm getting the dry sinuses. <laughs> yeah, I'm there too. Yeah. My entire body is uh, mummified. Yeah. I now. got the humidifier in my hotel room though, all week, constant. I've gone through like Smart. five gallons of water. Hey Smart. everyone, I'm Jeff Marushak. I am a senior solutions architect with the AWS DoD Air Force team. And today we're talking about something near and dear to my heart. Oh, I've had a little so bit of experience. Cool. I'm not a game developer, but I want to introduce our guest, Yuho. That, tell, us, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so hi everyone. My uh, name is Johan Anton, and I'm a senior solutions architect uh, focusing on game server hosting solutions. So, Game Lift and Game Lift Anywhere is what we're here to talk about yes. specifically. But I, I think it's a smart move probably to, to begin with Game Lift before we get to the anywhere, right? Because yep. Game Lift's been around, I think, what, 2017? Yeah, since 2017, yes. What is Game Lift and how does it help uh, game developers bring their games to? multiplayer to, what, what types of features does GameLift uh, actually focus on when building a game? Yeah, sure, so, so GameLift allows developers to run, uh, deploy, run and scale dedicated game servers for multiplayer games. So this could be Battle Royale games, racing games. It could also be any sort of virtual environment where you need real-time communication with, or real-time interaction between, between users or players. Uh, the way it does that is that you upload something called the game server build. So typically this is your, from your game engine like Unity or Unreal or your custom engine. And you run the simulation on the server side with that build. You upload that to GameLift and you deploy it globally with something called a multi-region fleet. So you can have any locations. Uh, the reason for that is that developers need low latency connection to, to the game servers. Uh, and then also GameLift offers things like matchmaking. It offers things like latency-based session placement. So it sort of makes the whole game server hosting process relatively easy for uh, de developers. Right, so what's the new feature, what's the new announcement with GameLift this week? So yeah, what we released today actually is uh, GameLift Anywhere. So basically what we heard, we heard from customers was that they have existing infrastructure uh, where they are hosting maybe game servers for some other games, and they would like to combine that existing infrastructure with the managed uh, locations that we provide with GameLift. Uh, so that's one use case for game anywhere. Uh, the other use case is local iteration. So developers want to test the game server build like continuously when they make changes, but they still want to register it to their like development backend running on AWS. So game with anywhere allows you to hold. It allows you to host game server processes anywhere. So you right. can create something called a game with anywhere fleet. You have your custom location, uh, and then you can host a game server process on your laptop. You can host it in production in your sort of existing infrastructure if you have a lease that, that's ending in a few years. So you just want to be close to players where we don't have a location. Uh, so that's basically what uh, Game with Anywhere does. I mean, uh, you got to love when a uh, service tells you what it does in the name, basically. Anywhere, right? That's, that's pretty obvious yeah. from the service name. That's what we're going to be doing. You and I were talking off stage too. You know, I come from more of the DevOps world. I, I'm not a game developer, unfortunately for me. But uh, it's uh, it sounds like there is this overlap. You know, we're still doing development work, right? In, in, in more of the I'd say web server type dev world. You know, developer flow is and, and the tooling that you use and being able to you know easily iterate uh, fast locally on your own machine is massively important there. Yes. Sounds like it's the same in game development world. What did you hear from customers that, that motivated you all to, to build this? Yeah, so we had, we had a number of customers on the preview, and for example, Nitro Games, which is a Finnish uh, game studio, they uh, were using the local iteration feature. So as they, they told us that they were able to reduce their like, iteration time from 20 minutes to basically instant. Wow. So they just like, do a new game server build, register it back to game with anywhere, and they can start provisioning game sessions on, on their local uh, development environments. Well, it sounds like if the developers know they're going to use game lift in the cloud when they're doing development, they want to test and do dev on the same type of environment. So I can see where this would help, where they know next, it's going to be more like production if you're using game lift anywhere locally or uh, in your own data center. Yeah, so, exactly. exactly, and you can, you, you can use all the, like, the matchmaking features, the session placement features, your own backend as well, like yeah. player data or whatever you have in your develop, development environment uh, together with your local game server. So you, we love demos here. I heard yep. you've got one for us. Yes, sure, so I'll just log back into my laptop. Okay. 
All right, there we go. So yeah, let's let's go to the demo. All right, mm -hmm. there we go. All right, so what I have here, I'm uh, obviously in the AWS uh, console, uh, and I'm um, the first thing we need to do is create a location. So I'm in the game with console. Uh, first, I create a location. So I go to uh, game lift locations. You can see that there's a, a number of system-defined locations. So these are the regions, the local zones that AWS manages when you host a, host a fleet on EC2 or on GameLift. And then you have custom locations. So I have a few created already. Uh, we'll create a new one. Uh, I'll call it the reInvent Location 1. Uh, you could tag it, but we don't, don't tag it here. We just like go and create the location. So this uh, could be uh, existing infrastructure, uh, your laptop or something like yeah, that? Yeah, this could be like development environment location. Yeah. So it could be also like my data center that I already yeah. have. Uh, so location is created. The next thing is that we create a fleet. So uh, when you go to fleets, you create, click Create Fleet. Uh, you have two options. So you can create a, a managed EC2 fleet, and you can create an anywhere fleet. So the managed EC2 fleet, that's a multi-region fleet that can host your build across a set, 23 regions, a local zones, anywhere fleet, you can add one or more custom locations. Gotcha. So we'll do the anywhere fleet here, uh, here next. Uh, and essentially what we do with the anywhere fleet is that we uh, define a name for it. Uh, we define a description. So let's start with the name. Uh, we'll call it reInvent Demo, add a description to it. Uh, there's a few other attributes you can use here. Uh, we don't need to go too much into details here. Just uh, go with the default and it's, hit, hit next. Uh, and now we select the location. So you could have, as I said, multiple data centers, multiple locations. You could use this with the Anywhere fleet. Oh, uh, cool. So you could deploy to multiple at once. Yes, exactly. And the other thing is that you can combine an Anywhere fleet and a managed fleet. So you can have the same game with Q, which is a game with construct, uh, directing sessions to a managed fleet and an Anywhere fleet. So oh, wow. all those locations based on player latencies against those uh, endpoints. Nice. Don't have to set them up individually. That's nice. Yeah. So we'll just select our new location here, uh, click Next. Uh, and then obviously you want to tag your resources. So you typically would have things like, what is the name of the game? Uh, what is the uh, environment? So these are things that you would use for billing and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then we'll just like, yeah, check, check our configuration and, uh, and go, go on and create the fleet. So because this is an Anywhere fleet, it just create, gets created immediately. Because nothing is deployed. It's a, just like a logical construct. Uh, so what we need is the fleet ID. So we need this for our to create a compute resource on the fleet, uh, and also to create game server processes on that compute resource. So next, I'll, I'll go to uh, AWS Cloud9, RMS Cloud9, uh, which is a Linux environment where I just like set up some of the sure. some of the next steps. So the first thing we need to do is we'll create a, a, we register compute. So for that fleet, we register compute for a specific location. So this would be your like virtual machine what, running in a data center, right before, and, yeah. and it could be your laptop. So for, yeah. for, for our case, this is my, my laptop here. Uh, I'll just set up the fleet IDs here, uh, just, just uh, to reference the correct fleet. Uh, and then I call register compute. So we'll define the, the name, which is dev environment in my case. Uh, we'll define the fleet ID. Uh, we'll define the IP address, so I'm actually using localhost local local yeah. here because I'm just testing myself. Uh, yep. It could be my like local network address. It could be also a public public IP. And then we define the location. So this is the new location we created, uh, and then we create this compute. So essentially, a compute can host multiple game server processes, and this is typical. So you commonly want to have multiple processes running on a single uh, virtual machine or a single like bare metal instance. Uh, so we get the information for the compute. You get things like WebSocket endpoints. So game servers need to connect over WebSockets to register. Uh, you get the IP address and all the sort of ARNs and, uh, and other resources here. Uh, all right, so we have the compute set up. Uh, so to be able to run a game server, we need an authentication token. So we call uh, compu get compute auth token to create an, a token for our uh, local game server to register to this compute. Uh, and this token is used to create a secure WebSocket connection from my game server process to the Anywhere fleet. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was going to ask how is security built into this, but I see here uh, we're using tokens. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so all these APIs are, of, of, of course, like standard AWS APIs. You have the standard security, AWS IAM, access control. Uh, and then the game server process itself, we use this authentication token for the WebSocket, secure WebSocket connection. I imagine WebSocket is pretty standard used in, uh, in most gaming environments. For the bi-directional. Yeah, exactly. Right, so you want data. to, yeah, yes, you want to communicate both ways. For example, 
the way it's used here is that when a session is provisioned on your local game server, a callback gets called that you are okay. now hosting a session for these players with this configuration. Right. All right, so I have uh, Unity Game Engine here. Uh, so we have the sort of, this is our game project for both the client and the server. I have it in server mode now. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll go to the script. I have a gameless script here uh, using the gameless server SDK. And I'll set up a few things. So I need to set up the right fleet ID here. I, I have an old one, so I'll set up the new one. I set up the compute name and then the latest authentication token here. Um, so yeah, we we'll just go and grab, grab that from Cloud9. Um, and this has an expiration time, so you need to actually like get it and then create this game server. It gets renewed automatically, so the SDK will do this for oh, you. Nice. Uh, and then you, you see some command line arguments. So in our production environment, we would of course feed this information through the CLI. Uh, right. Sorry, through uh, when we start the process. So this is your fleet ID, this is your compute name, this Passive is your token, and like set it up. All right, so the uh, other things related to the SDK, you need to call something called init SDK, so you have the WebSocket endpoint, all that configuration that I just set up. Uh, then you have the callback, so this is like game system created, health check, and then you call something called process ready to set these callbacks for, for GameLift. So that's all we need. Uh, the next thing we can do is, uh, well, after the scripts compiles, uh, we can, sorry, the, the font is really small, so you can't really see the console output that well. Uh, but we'll start a new game server. Ser so this is a local game server using that authentication token, uh, registering to, to game with anywhere. Uh, and what we'll see eventually when, it, when it's compiled, when it's running, uh, is that the SDK gets initialized, the process is ready, it's hosting the game server process, ready to host, ready to like provision a game session here. Uh, so next, we can, next thing we can do is we go back to Cloud9 and sort of simulate our development backend. So now we have our like development backend that has matchmaking components, uh, other things, or maybe we create get sessions uh, directly. So what we'll do is we actually just create a session directly. So we call, uh, call the create game session API on this fleet ID. Uh, and once we do that, a session gets provisioned on a free compute, uh, so, uh, sorry, free game server process, which is essentially our local okay. uh, development environment here. Uh, and we'll get the output of that. So we'll, we'll see the IP and the port, and these are important. So port is, Port is defined by the game server process itself. So if you have multiple processes running on an instance, you want to have different ports for all of them. So we get the information here, and we can use this to route a player uh, to the session and create player sessions against this game server. I want to process. ask real quick, if it's OK, you, um, you know, is part of game lift, we talked about latency earlier, right? And, and latency and matchmaking is obviously incredibly important because it's not going to be real fun if you're connecting two people that, you know, one has a really uh, slow connection, the other is incredibly close and fast, you know, the other person is just going to yeah. decimate the other exactly. player, right? Uh, is that part of game lift to, to intelligently help with matchmaking? Yeah, so we do that actually in two layers. So we have the flex match, which is the built-in matchmaking component, where you can define latency rules. You can define other rules as well, like skill-based matchmaking. Oh, wow. Uh, so with latency rules, you can define, like, I want players group, like 10 players, two teams of five grouped who are like within a 50, 50 millisecond latency from a joint location, which could be an anywhere location or a managed location. You can, it could be both. Right. Uh, the clients will send the, the, the latency information to the backend. Backend will create a matchmaking ticket. Players get proved. It goes to a game list queue, which is uh, also like latency aware. So you said the latency is there, and the queue finds a location that is suitable. Yeah. Uh, and it also has a fallback mechanism. So if there wasn't the capacity in your anywhere location, it could even like fall back to the next best option, which right. could be like a managed location, for example. That's so nice. that's, all, I mean, that's all built in. Sounds very complicated to build on your own. So it's it, nice it, it, to... is, it is, especially on the global scale, <laughs> right. and hosting in yeah. multiple regions and locations. So yeah, I think the last thing we'll, we'll show in the demo is that now the game session is created, we can go to game sessions in the game with console. Uh, you see it's active, so this means that the game server process got the call yep. back, it activated itself. So you might be doing things like loading a map or doing some setup there. And once it's active, we could next uh, start creating player sessions on it. Uh, if we went through the matchmaking, the player session would be created automatically. But here we just created a session directly. So we would now call the API to create player sessions. Players will get also an authentication token that they can send to the server. And the server can validate that so you can securely secure also that, make sure that the right players are connecting to the right uh, processes. Nice. All right, yeah, I think we'll skip. Uh, I, have, I have sort of this production setup as well, but it's, it's a long, so we'll probably okay. skip Okay, yeah, that. we can, we can, we can uh, skip around for sure. Yeah, so we've talked, this is enabling 
developers, game developers, to, to set up the game servers locally. But in the end, how do you envision this helping migrating more game servers to the cloud? Yeah, so my, the migration use case, uh, that's interesting. So there's a lot of game, stu game studios that have a lot of existing infrastructure, so they have multiple data centers across the world where they're hosting game servers, but they would like to combine that with managed locations, uh, AWS regions, AWS local zones. So what you can do with Anywhere is that you still use those existing, that is the existing infrastructure. You just set an Anywhere fleet, define all those locations, but you also define a managed fleet and start slowly scaling that infrastructure. And when you, once you're ready to get rid of your data centers, you can just like move things to it's to less of a side. migration because yeah, it's exactly. right there, yeah. Well, I, I loved, uh, you, you showed us, right? Uh, it's the same setup. You just pick one or the other. Yeah, right? yeah, and you and can have And then they're both. all still listed. Yeah, yeah, you can combine both, yes. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So do you have any good customer like wins with this new feature? Is anyone using this? Uh, well, as I said, it's in, it's in preview. So we, we, we have some customers in preview. We have one quote in the blog, so the one I already mentioned, Nitro Games, uh, who tested it for local iteration, but Obviously, now that it's out today, we'll, we'll yeah. get a lot more. All right, good. Now, uh, you know, if I'm a dev working on games, either in a studio or, or independently, how can I go get started at least maybe just using this locally? Yeah, so that's relatively easy. So what you do is you go to the Gamelist website, you download the Gamelist server SDK, you bring that to your Unity project or Unreal project, your custom C++ engine, uh, and then you set up your AWS account and you start creating your like lo local locations and, and local fees. So you can even start with that. Uh, we have a free tier for Game with Anywhere, so you can ha have, uh, I think, one million uh, connection hours and then also 10,000 uh, game session creations. So you, can, you can just nice. like, free, it's, it's free to test it out. And then once you're ready, you can up create that build, upload it, and, and also host like manage, uh, manage locations. It's uh, fascinating, you uh, Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. We're out of time, unfortunately, so we've got to move to our next segment. Right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. We will be right back with more from AWS On Air at <laughs>